Well, welcome uh, everyone um, to our second uh, roundtable on uh, Iraq. Um, Wayne is going to introduce our speakers, but Wayne wanted me to kind of uh, frame things a little bit first. And uh, I think part of the framing will be is that, is that uh, uh, <coughs> both uh, uh, Liam and Camila are going to talk a little bit about their personal journeys. And I, I, I understand that to a degree because uh, my journey uh, was uh, a similar one in the sense of reaching a point where I volunteered to, to, to go to Vietnam. I felt like it was the right thing to do. I had decided I didn't want to kill anybody, so I chose a non-combatant role, uh, which was a C-130 pilot, but eventually began to feel that I was the, the grease uh, making the wheels of war go round, and that uh, I eventually concluded that what I was being asked to do was, was immoral, and so I refused to fly any further missions on the day before the invasion of Cambodia. And I think as I think back on it, and I wish I'd kept a diary because it's, it's all a blur, but I think what, what, what strikes me was how lonely the whole thing was because I couldn't talk to anybody in the seat next to me in the aircraft or uh, you know, anybody uh, on the ground because I didn't know where they were on this thing. I didn't have contact with an anti-war movement. Um, and so my, my journey was one of, of, of great uh, kind of loneliness. Uh, and then when I found myself locked up in a psychiatric ward and being pumped full of drugs, it even got even more lonely in the sense of uh, uh, wondering if I was out of balance or uh, the world was out of balance. And for me, the turning point came when they, they sent a psychiatrist who was a West Point graduate. Uh, I couldn't make phone calls or have visitors in this locked psychiatric ward, and they sent this West Point graduate who was a pilot, uh, and like me, a paratrooper, uh, and a psychiatrist. Uh, not that I was a psychiatrist, but I was a, I was a paratrooper and a pilot. And he'd been a West Point graduate, and he said, Clements, uh, you know, you're going through the, th the three-year slump that many graduates go through, and we'll drop all of these psychiatric labels on you if you agree to go back to Saigon and just continue. You've only got a few months left in your tour of duty. And that, that moment for me was kind of <clears throat> illuminating because I thought, if I go back to their insanity, I'm okay. But if I refuse to participate in their sanity, I'm a patient in the psychiatric ward. And, and for me, that was a liberating moment because I realized that uh, that there was a choice, and that they were the ones out of out of balance, and and, 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 and not me. Um, but I think that that journey is very difficult because you feel like you're betraying the people beside you. You feel like you're betraying your family. You feel like you're betraying, you know, you're called you're called unpatriotic and traitor and all kinds of things. And I think it's a it's a it's a difficult journey, but it's one that's eventually transformative. Uh, uh, and it, you know. I think has characterized the rest of my life in some, in some ways. Um, it was the Iraq War that brought me back to USC. <clears throat> I was there on an emergency human rights mission in uh, uh, late January 2003 and was so uh, angry about all the deceit that led up to the war that was obvious right there and then. Uh, uh, and anguished about what I understood was going to unfold, that when I came back and the war started, my wife turned to me one day and she said, you know, it might be better for all of us if you went back to full-time human rights work, because uh, maybe you wouldn't be so mad about the world if you were doing more about it. And uh, with that, I had permission to kind of look around at what kind of work was available and very happily ended up here. So it gives me great pleasure that we are uh, actively engaged in addressing the Iraq War, that that work is being uh, uh, led in large part by, by, by Wayne Smith, and that we're choosing uh, to partner with organizations that, that are really at the front lines of the struggle, and that is with the men and women in uniform who are saying no uh, through address, uh, 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 repeal for redress, and uh, through organizations like Military Families Speak Out. And for those who have already fought there, and are trying to make their voices heard through organizations like Iraqi Vets Against the War. And so, uh, anyway. But it is really so critical for us to take advantage of getting to a deeper level of understanding of how 
we are in the place we are in as a nation, as a people, and as a world community. We, the work that we do as a humanitarian organization is not so ironically at the opposite end of the spectrum of war. War is a force that causes these incredible consequences, imposition, and damages the life of people and world relations. But we also know throughout civilization, mankind has used war to shape the destiny of people, countries, and we are no different. Like Charlie, I served in Vietnam, as most of you know, and I'll spare you all of that ancient history, but I must tell you, um, having been a combat medic, one of the real commitments that I made was never again would there be another war like Vietnam. And we all now know that we have surpassed the damage done by Vietnam. We are in unknown charted waters in terms of, again, the world community, the incredible damage being done to the people of Iraq. There are some two million people who have been uh, become refugees, two million people who have been displaced in that country, and the whole Middle East is unstable. Today, the drum continues to beat of war for a potential strike in Iran. And I don't think any of us would be terribly surprised if this administration does that. So it is, again, truly an important opportunity for us to hear from the men and women who have served in that country, Iraq and Afghanistan. But it does give me an extraordinary amount of pleasure to introduce and share with you truly friends of UUSC in the form of Liam Madden and Camilo Mejia. Many of you have met uh, these men. Camillo, of course, was with us at GA. Liam graced us last Memorial Day and helped to deepen our understanding about the price of, of war for those who die and make the ultimate sacrifice. Both men certainly do not need any more of an introduction from me. You have their bios, um, and more importantly, we'll give them a chance to talk with us each, uh, Liam will begin and talk with us for about 15 or 20 minutes about his experiences and transformation, and then Camilla will do the same. And then lastly, we will use that valuable time for questions and answers, and I know each of you have many. So again, without further, it is just so good to see you. Thank you very much, brothers, for coming, and uh, Liam, would you begin?